Hey everyone, I'm Nitsan Tregerman. I'm the coordinator of Tel Aviv Houdini Group and I've been using Houdini for the past five years. Today I will show you Antilib, which is my Houdini open source HDA library. Antilib is an open source Houdini HDA library. It contains tools for creating new dynamics and animations in Houdini. You can download all of the tools and the example files for free in GitHub. Today we will go over 5 HDAs, starting from the Chlandi Noise node. The next tool is Chlandi Noise. It creates Chlandi patterns on the geometry. Changing the pattern evolution creates unique animations. And you can create the Chlandi Noise as a geometry attribute or a volume. The tool is based on an article called Chlandi Figures Revisited, which describes the shape of the Chlandi pattern in three dimensions. Understanding the article is actually pretty complicated, so I highly recommend you watch this video by Physics Girl. She does a really good job explaining what is going on. So let's take the rubber toy as an example. And I'll connect it. Immediately it creates the Chlandi pattern as an attribute. And we can see this is attribute noise. But we can also create it as an SDF. We need to set the resolution straight. And we can also make it as a fog VDB. Also, we can change the evolution and change the pattern. And let's dive in. So if we dive in, this is the whole node. We got the attribute noise and the volume noise. So here, if we go to the attribute noise, here we got the function from the article that I basically copied and replace it with some parameters. Then I use attribute promote to get the maximum and the minimum of the noise. And then I remap it. And with the ramp, I only keep the values with low frequency. So that's how I get the pattern. And I do the same thing on the volume. Here I convert the rubber toy to a volume. Then I use Chlandi pattern, this time on a volume wrangler. Again, I'm taking the minimum and the maximum. I'm remapping it and I'm getting the Chlandi pattern. If I want to convert it to an SDF, then I use the convert VDB node, and then I get an SDF, and I'm just uh, smoothing it just a little bit, so it's a bit nicer. Let's take a look at a setup which is a bit more complicated. We start from a box, and then we add the Chlandi noise. We set it to be a fog, and we animate the evolution parameters. So we have the noise. I wanted to make grains out of these simulations and so I took the first frame and froze it then I converted it into an SDF and filled it with points with the velum constraint grains uh, save the rest attribute set up the collision as the bounding box and for the velocity of the grains what I did is I calculated the gradient uh, of the original fog volume and that gave me a very interesting result. And this gradient makes a really nice velocity field. And when we dive into this DOP network, it's just a very simple volume solver with the pop advect volumes when the pop advect volume uses this velocity field. Next, I cached it and I got it animated with color. And we are definitely getting a beautiful render. Okay, let's talk about velocity from curves. I drew a basic curve and then I applied the velocity from curve node and it created a velocity field around my curve. I can control the curve width, so I have a bigger field. The main tab is the forces tab and it's separated to three different forces. Follow force, suction force and orbit force. If I'll turn off the orbit and suction force, you can see that the follow force is, is just following the tangent of the curve. If I'll only have a suction force, then the direction of the velocity is toward the curve and not following the curve. And I can also have an orbit force, which would orbit the curve. And we can combine all of them to get an interesting result. We can also add a curl noise 
And so we add some randomness to the velocity. And let's dive into the velocity form curves now. So I'll click allow editing of contents and let's dive in. We got the curve. We resample it and we calculate the tangent. Then we initialize P scale in order to sweep it afterwards. We then convert this sweep to a VDB. And then from this SDF, we are activating a velocity field using VDB activate. And here in this volume wrangler, we calculate the follow force, suction force, and orbit force. Afterwards, we use the volume warp in order to add curl noise. And we also got a project non-divergent node here. That's the main feature of the velocity form curves. I got another example here where I created a small tree with curve node and I used the velocity form curves to get this interesting result. Then I use this result here. So again, I got the same tree here. And I use a pop net to advect all the points. And obviously now the points are following the curve and we can color them. And that's the velocity form curve. It's a very basic tool, but it's very, very useful. The 2D smoke solver creates a simulation on a two dimensional plane, which is then cached as a texture. This simulation is relatively fast with a lightweight cache. So I got a box here. I turn it into a density field. Then I can input it into my solver. And it makes a beautiful simulation. Let's take a look at a different example where we also source the velocity field. Here we have the same setup with a box and a density field. And in the second input, we have a velocity field. So here I draw a curve with a curve node, resampled it, and used a, a different node, which is called the velocity form curves. And it generates like a velocity field using a curve. And we also can add collisions. So here is an example where I got the same setup, a velocity field input, and also a collision input. And you can see the collision is working right. Okay, let's take a look at a more advanced setup. For the sourcing of the density, here I got a curve, and I mirrored it, and I swept it, and then I transformed it to a fog VDB. For the velocity, I got a line that I then resampled and I used the velocity form curve to generate a, a force going to the right. And for the collision, I placed my model here. It's a perfume. And then I raid it to the ground, so it's now two-dimensional. Scattered a bunch of points and turned those points to VDB. So I got a flat collision here. And the next step would be to transform the texture to a polygon grid. Created a grid with really high resolution. And I used VEX to sample the texture and also displace the geometry. Now this grid is displaced by the texture. And then I bring also the model back. So here I merge everything. And this is the render. The SDF Growth Solver creates a simulation that advects an SDF field. It's doing it by using its gradient and its curvature as a mask. It can also use velocity and collision inputs. So we got a sphere. Let's create a SDF Growth Solver and connect it. So we got a simple growth setup. Let's look inside of it. And here we got the solver and all the post-processing. Let's dive to the solver. And here, let's go step by step. The main engine is here. It's the VDB advect. It advects the SDF by a velocity field that we input here. And the velocity field is created by a combination of the gradient and the curvature of the SDF. We can also input a velocity and here we combine everything together. So 
I know it looks a bit complicated, but let's try and simplify it. We got the gradient, which is the direction of the velocity, and we mask it. We mask it with a curvature mask, and we also mask it with a turbulent noise that is based on the position. And Tagma made a brilliant tutorial about advecting SDFs, so I highly recommend that you go and watch it. And after the solver, we have some post-processing. So we raise the resolution with a very sample node, we smooth it with a VDB smooth, and then we convert it to polygon, transfer some attributes, and create a color. And that's basically the solver. Now let's look at the example with velocity and collisions. Here we got the sphere again. And I created a curve and then used the velocity form curve node, which creates a velocity field. Here in the collision, I have this box and I turned it into a collision VDB. Now, when we click here, we, we can see that the SDF won't collide with, with the collision SDF. And it's also going in the direction of the curve. So that way we can control the direction of it and maybe prevent it from going anywhere that we don't want. We can also use the collision as a container. So here I got the rubber toy. I'll turn it into a collision VDB. I'll also use the sphere SDF. And here, when I look at it, I'll have the sphere filling up the, the rubber toy. This one is just an, another example of uh, a different setup. I got this container here. I also created some curl noise. Uh, and we can fill the holes a bit. So here again, I got the SDF. I'm raising the resolution. Here I'm dilating the geometry and then I'm combining them. Now I got a flat uh, surface, smoothing it a little bit, converting to polygons here. Here I made a follow-up attribute that indicates on the areas that are close to the surface or not. Now that would be ready for render. The extrude subdivision is a tool that recursively subdivides the geometry with polygon extrusions. It allows you to control the extrusions with an attribute and it's fully built with VEX. So we got the box, let's add an extrude subdivision node. We can change the number of iterations, but then we got a lot of intersections. We can control the decay parameter to have less intersections. We can also control the insert and the insert decay and get really cool animations. Another thing it, it can do is it can use a fall off. Like I created an attribute follow using the distance from geometry node and here I have a box that I animated. And this follow can be used to mask the extrusion. Let's take this sphere for example. Here I use the distance from geometry to calculate the distance. And here inside this point warp, I create a follow attribute which is a sine wave. I take the distance I calculated, and then here I sign it before I pre-multiply it. And then I get a follow-up attribute that I can use for the extrusion. Now I can have animated extrusions. Now that we understand it a little bit better, I just prepared a bunch more examples here. So uh, maybe I'll, I'll be able to show you here so we got this nice pyramid here and we got the extrude subdivision node. And if I double click it, I'll dive inside. And here I'm able to create a fall off that is only applied after the extrusion. Basically creating a fall off inside of the extrude subdivision creates a more detailed animation. And I also prepared a bunch more examples for creating interesting fall off for the extrude subdivision. So here is an example with a pig head and also there is an example with a dodecahedron. And yeah, that has been Antilib. Remember that you can download all of those tools for free from GitHub, including the example files and all of the HDAs. If you manage to create anything with my tools, I would absolutely love to see it. There are still a bunch of tools that are right now under development 
and I hope to release them in the future. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day.